guys, I'm Sakura and welcome to PHP tutorial number 47. Today we're going to be looking at using hidden input types in your forms. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code. Now we're actually using exactly the same code as last time, except you'll notice one main difference. In the index page, I've got a whole bunch of PHP above my form. Uh, you can see it all there. Now this is... This is all the same, exactly the same, apart from like uh, two tiny differences. One tiny difference, even. Uh, it's otherwise it's all exactly the same as what we had in the process.php page. And what we're going to be looking at today is how to actually put all the processing uh, code into the same page as the form code, and therefore reduce the amount of files you have in your in your main folder and it reduces all the clutter. Now you might think that um, it's better to have separate files because it reduces the clutter of actual code in the actual file itself. And if that's your view, fair enough. You know, um, Go ahead and do two files for everything. I just, um, I remember thinking one time I hate having all these files um, and I've got like one page for this and then one page is exactly the same name just like underscore process or something on it and why can't I just put it all in the same page it's so annoying and so I just um, I looked up this method of doing it and really liked it and there's a small error there uh, so yeah I chose to stick with it uh, and I just thought you guys might like to see it and it would be a great way to actually introduce you to hidden input types as well uh, so let's take a look at our code. I just realized now I was right in saying there are two differences because there's this one difference here, this new input, and then uh, another difference up top as well. But anyway, let's first um, talk about when would you use a hidden input type um, and what is a hidden input type first of all. A hidden input type is essentially a way of storing data without letting the user see it and it's data that you need to be passed on to the action but that, like I said just before, the user doesn't actually need to see probably isn't concerned about at all, doesn't care what the value is um, you might ask now, well what's the point of having a hidden input, why don't you just put it in like a, a read-only text uh, text input um, certain things, like say you have some ID. I don't know what situation you'd have this, but you have an ID. Now this is some ID which the user really doesn't know what the hell it is for, doesn't care about it at all, has no problem with it being as it is, you know, doesn't need to change it, whatever. What's the point in actually clogging up the form, clogging up your actual page with this data? that the user doesn't give a crap about basically um, in a read-only text input when you can just have it hidden in the page I don't know what the reason would be and that's why I use uh, hidden inputs there are situations where it's good to have read-only text inputs so the user can actually see information that they might need to know but that they can't change uh, that does happen but in this case they don't need to see it, so we just have it as a hidden input type. Um, now, in this case, we use the hidden input type to tell the, to help the page determine whether it needs to process the form. If it attempts to process a form before a form's been submitted, and it tries to access, for instance, the uh, post array, the PHP post array. Uh, it's going to throw several errors because the post array doesn't actually exist until a form has been submitted. Now I might be slightly wrong in saying that. Maybe I'm not entirely sure that it doesn't exist altogether, but we certainly don't have the values of username and password in them, even if it does exist, um, because we haven't submitted a form, therefore no values could have been placed in them whatsoever. Um, so this hidden input type helps us to um, to help to tell the page how to determine whether to process the form or not. And let's just take a look at it quickly before we go up and see the code that actually does all the stuff. 
um, it's input type equals hidden, name equals submitted, value equals true. Now just so you know, the value can be anything, it could be completely random, because we're not actually going to be checking the value to see if it's equal to something. We just want to know that this um, value is existent, okay? Because obviously, um, sorry, I just need to uh, tell you this for now, um, hidden values, they don't exist as PHP variables until the form's submitted either, much like the values that get in the post array. This will actually become part of the post array, just so you know. Um, and its key will be the name. So the key will be submitted. It will be dollar sign underscore post submitted. Um, and so it obviously doesn't exist until the form's been posted. That's how you make sure of that. Anyway, so now we know what all this is. Let's go up and see the one line that does everything. It's basically an if statement checking to see if it's using the is set function, which basically, basically, sorry, basically, uh, basically checks to see if a variable has been declared or not, and it's checking to see if the variable or if the key value pair of submitted and it submitted value has been inserted into the post array, and if it has, then that therefore means that the form has been submitted. Therefore, start processing the array. That's all you need to do to um, have all that stuff in the same page. Anyways, uh, this has been a quick tutorial by ASIC12 guys. Over and out.